Hey everyone, what's crack -a My name's Amel and you're watching Newsbreak. Today is Are You OK Day. A great reminder that every day is a good day to ask, are you OK? Michelle caught up with some school students who are marking the day. That's right, I'm here at Charles Campbell College for Are You OK Day. Students here have been preparing for today for a while and I'm here to ask them what Are You OK means to them. Are You OK Day is a day for people to see how people are going. Um, it's a day where you can check up on anyone and it doesn't matter if you're friends or if you don't even talk to each other. It turns out four in ten Australians think asking someone Are You OK is a conversation for an expert and not for them. So this year's theme for Are You OK Day is no qualifications needed. Not everybody's got to be a professional, not everyone needs an educational degree just to ask someone if they're okay. Exactly. Anyone and everyone is qualified to ask a friend or family member how they're doing. But how do you know when to check in on someone? The biggest one that I would notice is disassociating from people around you, keeping your head down, keeping to oneself. You might be able to tell that they're down. They seem a bit more like quiet than usual. Maybe they're tired because they couldn't sleep well. And sometimes conversations can be hard to start. But these guys have some handy tips. I think I'd just say, hey, how are you doing? Like, are you all right? Are you okay? That sort of thing. You don't have to start off like full on like going in about like a bunch of negative things. You can start off like happy, like positive, and just ask how they're going. I'm probably, yeah, just the big, are you okay? Are you feeling all right? You don't look the best, you're down see that, just make it so it's you're a warm person to come to when someone needs advice or just to even vent about um, events that are happening. Snapchat has removed some of its filters after a big outcry in New Zealand. The filters apply traditional Maori tattoos, including a tamako to users' faces, but after backlash in New Zealand, they've taken them off the app. Tamako are sacred and represent the family history of the wearer, so shouldn't be worn by anyone who isn't Maori. NASA just dropped a new pic from the James Webb Telescope. Smile! This is the Tarantula Nebula, about 161,000 light years away from Earth. It's the largest and brightest star forming region of the galaxies closest to the Milky Way. And scientists say it's got a pretty similar chemical composition to the very early days of the universe. Very cool! Meet Bruno the Brake Carriage. He's the first autistic character to be introduced to the TV show Thomas and Friends. And he's voiced by nine year old Elliot, who's also autistic. Check it out. Give me a break. Get it? Give me a break. Get it? You probably all know Thomas and Friends. I mean, even I watched it as a kid. Now it's going into its 26th season, and there's a new train, or carriage, on the tracks. Bruno is a brake car, and he's a new friend for Thomas and his friends. And he's also autistic like me. He is funny, smart, and he um, and he's a very relaxed character. He he can get really overwhelmed. He can get worried, but um, and he's his comedy to get past to get past situations. Elliot was cast to play the role with the help of the National Autistic Society, and Bruno's characteristics were created alongside autism groups. Stop! His ear defenders, I I do relate to because if there's a really loud one, I can't cope. What Elliot brings to this role is his joy and enthusiasm, his autistic experiences, and just brings the character to life. It's greater that they are representing autistic characters, and it makes me feel very happy, because I, I watched some of Friends, and for there to be an autistic character, character it makes me feel very um, happy. We were going around the mountain. Thanks, Bruno. Great idea. Put on your best explorer gear and take out your best binoculars, because we're... Heading into the wild. This is Chi Chi the Chimp, and she's heading back into the wild. She escaped from a zoo in Kharkiv, Ukraine, and was seen wandering the streets. That was until zookeepers tried to lure her back in with a hug, and oh, that didn't work. After some heavy discussions and her favourite jacket, Chi Chi the Chimp got on her bike and headed home. So wild. Oh, looks like the end of the show. See ya. <laughs>